um, Blue, I keep noticing that, like, <laughs> you're appreciating uh, how much you brought up and stuff. And I jokingly in my head refer to you as the my favorite person who doesn't play Exceed. <laughs> you, you do play, but I love that. Not meme. super love that often. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, Blue is the best Exceed player who doesn't play Exceed. Can confirm. It's it's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. I should read up on chat. Uh, let's see. I've kind of been glancing, but I haven't really been reading. What's the line between taking risks and just being an idiot? Um, when you do it on purpose? Uh, ask Reggie, why him? Because he rides that line. That's true. Yeah, Reggie very openly, very directly is like, yeah, play with, that, with no respect for your opponent's options. Play whatever you want to play. Make them have it. It's fine. No fear. No regrets. I've only played... Reggie a handful of times, but there is no universe where I would consider him a weak player. No, Lord, no. He's very, very good. Um, mind you, he makes a point of talking about himself like he's worse than he is to prevent himself from getting a big head, which I respect. Like, that makes perfect sense. Um, hmm. It's a loud thudding sound. Still earlier for the delivery. Okay. Anyway. Um, at least I think that's why. But, like, no, he's a very good player. Uh, Blue, Marco, also extremely skilled players. Uh, I'm good in a, in a narrow window of characters. I'm also very good at talking about the game. So, like, I consider myself a very good Exceed communicator. Uh, I would not say that I'm one of the best players, but I play Rimless and Imogene probably better than uh, hopefully anyone. I would like to be the best Imogene player on the planet. Uh, I'm okay with not being the best Rimless player on the planet. I would like to be the best Imogene player on the planet. Uh, Nice. Yeah, that's that's the hope. But yes, but I'm very good at talking about the game, so I can articulate my thoughts and what's going through my head when I'm playing Exceed, which makes it sound like I'm like super, super high level, just because I can explain everything in a way that makes sense to most people most of the time. But like, I do not approach uh, Anduril, and I would definitely consider Mad to be a better player than I am actually, Mad from Order. Um, I have some locals that I'm terrified of. Obviously, I play with Jay uh, once in a while, and I think he's much better than I am. Um, let's see. Good at reading tempo and game state. Oh yeah, I am good at making reads. That is a skill that I have. Um, I, I'm. I would like for my catchphrase to be so that's and then whatever the opponent's attack it pair is. I'm told it's not that, but it's fine. All right, running the line leans the opponent's play experience toward more oppressive, whereas we give a consistent deliberate play style. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, Blue and I both play with a game plan. Um, Reggie plays strike by strike. Uh, he is he is very skilled. Um, he absolutely is more skilled than he appears. He tries to appear less skilled than he is. Um, but like, if you played against his Galdred, uh, yeah, he's terrifying. His Galdred and his Dan. Um, his Dan in particular is very, very technical. Like, way more so than it looks, because that's how Dan is built. Dan is built to look way less technical than he is. He's supposed to look like a goofy, nonsense weirdo who just kind of flails, but he's actually very good. Um, and he requires lots of play. Anyway, I won't, I won't keep you this up, school. Sorry, I'm occupying your, your time, but thank you so much for playing. I'm really grateful for the games. I had a great time. Oh, yeah. No, this was fantastic. Uh... Cool. You'll laugh, but since I brought it up yesterday, I'll make this brief. But like, I asked you if you played Path of Exile, and you said yeah. Yes. And then yeah. once your stream was over, I sat down to play a little more for the evening, and my character died. And so I woke up oh. today, and I was like, I don't want to roll a new die right now because I don't know what I want to play. So I think I'll just play some much seed. <laughs> and here we are. I mean, I'm happy. So, I yeah, I feel like I. Uh, we're, we're, I mean, that 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 strictly to my benefit, so I have no complaints. <laughs> I get to play Exceed. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the games, man. Mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to more and uh, good stuff. Mm -hmm. See you around. Yeah, thanks for all the advice. It was all amazingly helpful. Cool. I, I assume no responsibility for when it inevitably proves to be disastrous and everything goes horribly wrong. Uh, but if it helps, the I'm glad. That's already what I'm doing. So I can't <laughs> I can't fall to that level. I'm already... Touche. <laughs> have a good day, man. Yep, have a gun.
Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, I don't understand what you were saying, Freyik, about uh, opponents' play experience, running that line, etc., etc. I don't... I don't really follow that. Hold on, I can explain it better over mic. Repeat the question, please. Oh, is that you? Oh, hi. Yeah, that's... Um, okay, so you said, I think that running that line leans the opponent's play experience more toward oppressive and sometimes very easy, whereas D and Blue both give a much more consistent and deliberate play style, leading the opponent's play experience to have a better understanding of what happens. Yeah, okay. First, I want to take a moment to complain about how bad Twitch's chat is when you drop. Um, That's, <laughs> no, completely fair. Yeah, they, there's no yeah. backlog. You're on your own. Um, so, it's like, when I play against you, this could be like you were saying with the, the communication... Uh, same thing with like Blue and with Marco, who are both pretty good at explaining what's going on. When you guys set up a really nasty kill turn where I just get smacked and lose a speed tie and just like absolutely just eat like 20 damage in three strikes, mm -hmm. I almost always have a, at least a vague idea of what happened to get me there. Like what I misplayed. Like, oh, three strikes back, I read, I should have read this instead of this, or I should have read instead of not reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or uh, just, I've had some, I think I lost a game to, uh, I think it was to Deceptical, because I was like 100% sure the last part of my deck was a CQC, but it wasn't. <laughs> I have been there. I have been there. So like, aside from like really vast misplays with like that, where you just lose your tempo completely, I never feel overwhelmed like i have no idea what's going on and it's just along for the ride i don't know if that's just me as a player but once i get discouraged enough i'm just sitting there letting the turns happen and i'm not going to do much about it just be I've, salty i've definitely done that to you um we can't talk directly about in what games except to say that they were in playtest games but i've definitely seen you do that in games against me yeah, playtesting games are weird for me just because nothing is final and you never know what's bounced or not, and it just... Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting dynamic that changes the way I feel about what I'm playing as and against, which that makes I sense. need to sort of... I, I have a salt problem. I work on it. Um, playtesting is a whole new dynamic that I have to work on. Makes but, um, the whole... Hold on, let me read this. Uh... Okay, so Tundra was saying that. Okay, so Tundra's if saying you can't like tell the the why. argument. Yeah. The argument would be, which is a very, you know, indirect way of saying I'm not arguing this, but like the argument could be made that Reggie must be even better because when Reggie beats you, you can't tell why. Now let me let me respond to that because I played against uh, RBY here. By the way, do you have a preferred pronunciation for that? Do whatever you want. I like RBY. Most people shorten it. I appreciate that. Okay, cool. So RBY, uh, ha like, I've played against him enough to be able to say that he's, well, I could tell this pretty early, actually. He's a skilled card game player. He's growing in skills and exceed player, but he's a skilled card game player because he can pick up characters he's never seen before and within minutes kind of assemble an understanding of what they're doing and how they're supposed to do it. So, like, I Papa Bless. Sorry, what? Papa Bless. Oh. But yeah, but like I can tell that you've play, been playing card games and that you have skill at them because you can, I can see that happening when I played against you. Like you picked up Shitoto and was like, sure, I'll try this. Didn't like look at hardly any of it. And then within a few turns was like, okay, I get it. Like I see what this character does. And, and then you demonstrated that you did see what the character did. Um, so like given that, I think it's, it's likely that most of the time you will be able to tell what led to your demise in any given game. Um, if you can't when a player like Reggie is doing it, or a player like my friend in real life, uh, Apid Blackwell is his screen name, um, like, that's, that's, it makes, it, it, I don't think the argument holds up. Um, I think it means that they are beating you in a different style. And that is the, yeah, that is the matter. So like, it's not because, my like, intention. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Uh, my intention with what I said specifically about Reggie was not to talk down to him or anything. It was that, like you were saying, he plays strike by strike. So mm -hmm. it's really difficult to go back. I, most of the time, it's not even possible to like go back in turns and say, okay, this happened. I see he was kind of setting it up in an ambiguous way here and there. Like I can, like I was saying, I can tell with like you and Blue and Marco is 
especially Marco. Like, if he's playing Zangief and he backs off, I'm like, oh, Tom Power. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what's happening there. <laughs> um, but, like, you can kind of... If you didn't notice it at the time, um, or it was a mix-up, a uh, mix-up setup, which I guess is a thing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you back off and you have several things. Um, you can kind of, like, look back and say, okay, that's what he was doing there. I didn't understand at the time, but now that I look back on it with hindsight, I can really understand how I just took 20 damage to the face. Mm -hmm. But with Reggie, because he plays strike by strike, I don't ever really feel like that after a match. It's like... Uh, like you're saying, when you go strike by strike, it's there's not that much setup, and the most, I mean, when I do that kind of gameplay, the most I do is just try to stay in the uh, ideal range for whatever cards I have left in my deck. Yeah, which it, which is sensible. That's a good habit. I think that Reggie's uh, the setup that he does is most obvious when he's playing uh, Dan. I think that's the character yeah. on which he is the heaviest on setting things up. But I don't want to get too far off into Reggie's playstyle because he's not here, and I, I'm gonna link him to this later so that he here's what we said, but I don't want to talk about somebody when they're not right here. Um, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, but he, he's a good player. And yeah, sure. 